Well, welcome juniors and seniors and advisors. Um, this is our virtual panel discussion on college life. And as you get closer to your commencement from Shorecrest, we thought it would be helpful to hear from some familiar faces about their college experience. The goal of this panel is to provide an opportunity for you to learn more about the transition from high school to college and gain advice for navigating college life. So I'll start the conversation with several questions that you have all submitted uh, prior to today, and then we will open it up for students and advisors to ask questions via the chat feature. Um, so with that said, we welcome four Charger alumni to our panel today. I'd like for them to introduce themselves uh, the year they graduated from Shorecrest, uh, what school and what school they currently attend. So Riley, would you like to start? Yeah, so I'm Riley. I graduated from Shorecrest in 2020, and I currently go to the University of Colorado Boulder. Thanks, Riley. And Riley, what is your major? I'm a Bachelor of Music in Musical Theater. Awesome. Thanks, Riley. All right, Grace. Hi, guys. Um, I graduated from Shorecrest also in 2020, and I'm currently at Northeastern University. And Grace, have you declared a major? Uh, yes, I'm majoring in criminal justice and minoring in communications. Awesome. Thanks. All right, Caleb. Um, my name is Caleb Kravitz. I graduated in the year 2020, and um, I currently go to University of Florida, and I'm studying business. Awesome. And Caleb, um, you are also a student athlete. Will you tell us what sport that you... Uh, I swim. I'm a swimmer. Fantastic. And Samia, go ahead. Hi, I'm Samia Hussein. I graduated in 2021, so just last year, and I go to University of Florida, just like Caleb, and my major is Nutritional Sciences, and I have a minor in Spanish. Awesome. Thanks. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, I think what we'll start with is um, what surprised you the most um, about college? What was something that you just didn't think, you know, you'd experience or know? Um, something that just surprised you on the transition to college? Caleb, you want to go? <laughs> uh, sure. Um, I think one of the things that really surprised me was no one's on your back and no one's getting you to do stuff. So it's completely on your own to make friends, to study, to do your homework. It's completely up to you. So no one's stopping you to stay up till three in the morning, but you're going to have to suffer the consequences the next day. And I kind of found that out pretty quick that if you stay up till three, you have to wake up at four and swim. So <laughs> awesome. Good. That's surprising. All right, Grace, how about you? Anything that surprised you on the transition to college? Um, yeah, I was kind of going to say the same thing. Also, just like you're responsible for yourself. And if you get in trouble or like mess up, then it's like kind of getting more into the real world. So you're held more accountable for your actions. Great. Riley, did you want to add anything to that or Sami, you add anything to that? Um, pretty much agree with what they said. It's all you and you've got to put in the work. Awesome. I think something I would say is that the pace of classes is very similar to an AP style class. So as long as you're like, you can manage an AP class, you'll be pretty good with college classes. And I don't know for everybody else, but for me, I didn't realize how much walking I'd be doing in college. It's a lot of walking to classes. And at first I was kind of like, I'm not ready for this. But then you build up your stamina and like, now I love walking to all my classes. Oh, so it's actually good we open Charger Commons and we have to walk between Landy and Charger Commons. Okay, cool. Um, and it's probably a bigger campus um, where you all are. It's great. Um, what was the most challenging part um, of the transition really to you? Like, was it being away from family, friends? Like what what was the hardest part of of going to college? Sami, do you want to start? Yes. Oh, go ahead, Riley. I think for me, uh, we started in like a COVID year, which was really difficult. So you're trapped in your dorm. And then also I've gone to Shorecrest my whole life. So I've, I was a lifer, had the same friends. So I think for me, it was really forcing myself to put myself out there and talk to people. <laughs> That's great. Actually, I have a question, a follow up if I could. Um, how, how did you go about making friends? Yeah, so um, I, I'm sure other schools have something like this, but all the dorms, you live in the dorms your freshman year, and all of those dorms are around this place called Fair and Field. And so all the freshmen would just go out and hang out there every night before school started. You also join like your school's Facebook page, their Instagram page, you follow people, you make group chats, um, you can join intramurals, their clubs, all that good stuff. Awesome. 
Anyone else want to to answer the most challenging part of the transition to college? Go ahead, Grace. Um, I would definitely say that leaving my family was the hardest part, especially like being out of state. Um, and I do have a few of my siblings up here, but still just like, I think it makes you appreciate it a lot more too, like spending time with them when you are home. And like, I still call my mom like every single day and like I'm constantly texting my siblings. So I definitely say for me, that was the hardest part of the transition. Nice. I think for me, the hardest part of the transition was like Grace said, just leaving home. Because when I first got here, I kind of was just like, wait, this happened so fast. I wasn't ready for it. But but you just kind of ease into it and you figure it out as you go. And with the friends thing, I made friends by joining clubs and I live in a dorm right now. So <laughs> I just go downstairs and you meet a bunch of people within the first week since like you click with some of them and you stay with them. Great. Thank you. Um, so aside from studying more, uh, what do you wish you would have done in high school? Maybe is it were maybe a class you wish you would have taken or extracurriculars or maybe something you a skill you learned before you went off to college, like doing laundry or something like that. Um, anyone want to answer that question on something that you wish? Go ahead, Riley. Um, as a musical theater major, I definitely wish I took music theory. Um, that's not been a fun thing to do in college, and yeah. <laughs> That's great. Samia, do you have anything that you wish you would have? Um, for me, well, right now I'm taking macroeconomics because my my major requires it. And I don't know anything about the economy. So I kind of wish I took macroeconomics in high school. And I kind of wish that I had like maybe a little bit more of a job experience just because that it's kind of nice to go into college. And like a lot of my friends have had job experiences. I did have one in the summer of my senior year, but I wish I had like a real, like a different kind of job, you know? Okay. Caleb, how about you? For me, I think the job experience is a big one. Um, coming into college, I'd only really making money from film contests and things like that. Um, but I didn't have a real job. I never really worked one. And I kind of wish that was something I, I did in high school. Awesome. That's great. Um, so going into college, um, uh, how did you know that college was the college you chose was the right one for you? Or when you were considering co colleges, what was the most important factor that you considered in making your decision? Grace, do you want to start? Yeah, um, I kind of like knew I wanted to go to Northeastern since like eighth grade. And for me, the biggest part in my decision was like location and school size. So I think that like first and foremost, when you're kind of like deciding what school you want to go to, you really want to consider if you want to be like in a city or um, in a college town. I think it's definitely two totally different experiences and they both definitely have their benefits. Um, and then school size as well. Obviously, we are we all went to Shorecrest, so it was a really small school. And for me, I feel like Northeastern kind of carries that same feel like all of my classes are still like 15 to 20 people. And I personally like that. So I think that those are two big factors for sure. That's great. So I'll ask then, um, based off Grace's uh, answer, the, the two that go to the University of Florida, where I imagine, well, I do know, uh, class sizes are not, are not that size, right? So Caleb, do you want to talk about, well, some of the factors that, you know, really weighed on you when you were making your decision um, to go to Florida? And Sami, I'll ask you that after. And then, you know, Talk a little bit about that experience. Um, so for me, it's a little different because I uh, went recruiting for swimming. So I got offers from Harvard, UF, Texas, Cal, pretty much all the big schools. And I know I wanted to go to a big school, probably in the top 20, top 10 in the NCAA. And from there, um, I really picked based on the people and the teammates, the coaches. Um, and I also got a really good feeling by University of Florida from the academic advisor, Tim, um, because in the end of the day, you're there to get a degree. And he was really helpful. He's been really helpful with tutors, with anything I need, um, helping me get through classes. Oh, that's great. Really good advice there. Samia, how about you? Okay, so it's funny because if you asked me in the beginning of my senior year if I was ever going to go to UF, I would have said, no, I'm not staying in state. But I think after I got in, I started to consider it. My biggest things were location and cost because I, I just didn't want to go to a super expensive school. Um, 
And then it just started to make sense because UF had everything I wanted. I did kind of like the big school spirit um, that's around campus. And I did like how close it was. I'm only like a two and a half hour drive away from home. And I have that ability to go home whenever I want. So I think those were the biggest factors. And at the end of the day, UF just made sense. Great. And Riley, um, for you, the process to, to getting to UC Boulder, what was that like for you? Yeah, so um, I didn't even know Boulder had a musical theater program when I was auditioning. Um, I actually learned about it really close to the deadline to submit something called pre-screens, which is like your before audition. And um, I learned about it from Aaron Wilson, who also graduated our year. And so my mom, having to know everything about everything, looked it up and she figured it out. And she said, Riley, you have to apply. So I did. And when I went to the campus, I just I fell in love with the campus. I fell in love with the teachers. I felt like Caleb said, you're there for a degree. You want to like the teachers you're taking classes from. And then I fell in love with everyone I was auditioning with and all the people who were helping at the audition. And um, yeah. Nice. That's great. So making those visits to, to college campuses really helped your decisions, sounds like. That's great. Awesome. Um, so we talked a little bit about majors, um, but how did you go about selecting your major? Um, and then have you changed your major? Is it common for students to change their major? Um, so once you're settled and you get in and you're taking classes, how did you go go about declaring a major? Did you have interest in advance or so? Um, Caleb, do you want to answer that one first? Yeah. Um, so I actually started out as a construction management major okay. and I did two semesters of that and I, I sat down with my mom. It wasn't really something I was super interested in. Um, so I switched to a business major. Um, I'm liking it a lot more. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really common for people to switch majors. A lot of my friends switched majors twice or so. And um, in the end, you kind of just figure out what you like and what you don't like. Great. So when you are switching majors, you want to make sure, though, that you're, you know, just not taking things that aren't going to apply. Like, so, you know, you don't want to be there for, I mean, maybe you do want to be there for eight years. Um, but who, who do you go to for advice on making sure that, um, you know, you can change a major, or your classes are aligning, things like that? Well, for me, um, I have an ath uh, athletic advisor um, and he handles all my class schedules and everything like that. Um, so I make sure I'm always in the right classes and on the right track. That's great. All right, Grace, how about you? Um, so I actually started off, Northeastern does a thing called double majors, and you have to hit the requirements of two. So I started off as a double major in history and political science, immediately regretted it. Um, it was like so much reading and writing. Um, and then kind of same as Caleb, I have an advisor that you work with for all four years, but actually my advisor changed when I changed majors. But um, I took an elective a criminal justice elective first semester and I just realized I was way more interested in that in terms of like the pre-law track so um, it was really easy to switch my major and I would definitely say if you don't think you're interested in something or don't think you can see like a long-term career I would definitely switch especially the earlier on the better. Great that's good advice. Sami you were shaking your head yes is that do you agree with that? Oh yeah, no, I agree. So I originally started off as an undecided major. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, but UF has this really helpful website with the list of all its majors. I recommend if you apply to UF, look at those majors because there's a ton that so you'll always find something that you want. Um, so I looked through those list of majors and I wrote down like my top five. And then I decided uh, nutritional sciences sounded really interested to, interesting to me because I like learning about nutrition and like how our body just functions and everything. And um, it just has all the prerequisite courses if I wanted to go to like med school or dental school. So I just chose it based off that. And then meeting with my advisor was super easy. I just went on the UF website and then contacted, contacted my advisor and they were, I was able to make a meeting really quickly. And then it was super easy to do. Um, and also it's very common to change your major. I changed my major well, I got a major, and then my friends are also in the process of changing their major. So don't even worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Awesome. So how do you balance your schoolwork with just college life, other aspects of life and, and being a college student? So how do you go about balancing that? Riley, you want to start? Sure. Um, so I don't actually take any gen eds. All my APs canceled out on my gen eds. So no, like math, English, science, whatever. Taking all music and acting and dance. Um, so it's pretty easy. 
I mean, uh, some of the classes, like theory, as I mentioned earlier, are not as easy, but I get all of my work done the day it's assigned, and then I have the whole weekend. I don't schedule any classes on Fridays, so I have a three-day weekend, and that's how I get by. <laughs> Great. Anyone else want to answer that? How do you balance? Go ahead, Caleb. Go ahead. So I have to stay organized. Um, I swim and train about like five hours a day, and then I have to get school done on top of that. So I have a big whiteboard above my desk, which you guys can't see, but it has all the times of practices, all the times of classes, and then I have a calendar with all of the assignments for the semester due, just to make sure I don't miss one or I don't miss a practice. I'm wearing the right shirt because if you don't stay on top of it, things can get really left behind, and it's really hard to keep up. Mm, that's great. Oh, Grace, go ahead. Um, so I think that it's just really important to like balance your time and like you're in college, you're supposed to be having fun. So like definitely don't just pour all of your time into schoolwork. Um, I also don't have classes on Fridays or Tuesdays. So I usually just make like three days of the week, just like a lot of school. And then um, like weekends usually are just reserved for like having fun and like not doing anything school related. Well, that sounds like a really nice schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Samia. So I agree with Grace. I think it's really important to have a balance. And the thing with high school that I also didn't realize was going to be really different in college is that you have a lot more time. It's not that you're staying in classes from like 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. You have breaks in between to do homework, to go hang out with your friends, to do some kind of extracurricular. So you have more time in that sense. So you will have you have time to do homework and do any extracurriculars curriculars you want. So I think as long as you are organized, you can have a balance of both. That's great. Awesome. All right. I'm going to open it up. The chat feature is open. So any advisors that have questions from their advisees, please go ahead and put it in the chat feature. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask was, how do you feel that Shorecrest prepared you for this next stage in your life for college? How do you feel? Um, go ahead, Grace. Um, I think... I don't know who said this earlier, but I definitely think that APs especially um, like really prepared me academic wise. I like really haven't had many classes that I like don't think I can handle. And I think that's just because Shorecrest is hard. So like I know in the moment it might be like, wow, this is so hard for high school, but I think it definitely pays off. Um, and like, I definitely think that we benefited from going to a small high school with small classes. That's great. Everyone's shaking their head. Anyone want to add to that? Uh, I can add on the musical theater side of things. We had a really great program at Shorecrest and it was really professional for a high school program, um, which, you know, in theater, they don't really put up with a lot of silliness. So having that like rigid you know, you need to be professional, you need to be presentable, you need to be five minutes early to everything. That helped me a lot in the theater department here. That's great. All right, so I've got some qu um, questions in the chat. So Mr. Burkett's class wants to know, what are your professors like? Are they approachable? Samia? Um, yes, I think from my, opinion, from my personal perspective, uh, my teachers are very approachable. Of course, I'll have lecture halls that are full of like 150 people, but you can still have that one on one connection as long as you go into office hours. You just have to make the effort to um, create that relationship. And they're all super approachable. They're to, they're there to help you. And also there's a bunch of TAs if you don't feel comfortable going to your professor. So you can always go to a TA, which is usually like a year older than you, two years older than you, um, and they can help explain any concepts that you have trouble with. So there's always a way that you can figure it out. But as a general answer, yes, your teachers and professors are very approachable. Great. Go ahead, Grace. Yeah, going off that, I definitely think that a lot of professors are very approachable um, and definitely, like, take advantage of, like, getting a close relationship with them because it just pays off. And, like, if you're reaching out to them throughout the semester, they're going to be more lenient if you, like, miss a deadline or something like that, if you have a good relationship with them. Um, and I would also say just, like, definitely – try to like engage with them like this is their career so they're obviously very passionate about what they're teaching like I had um, a course last semester that was taught by a judge on the Massachusetts um, Supreme Court 
So that was like really cool. And I like maintained a really good relationship with him. So even like going forward, like I know that I'll be able to get like a letter of rec from him. So I just think that like these relationships are really important. You should definitely take advantage of it. Oh, that's great. Really, really good advice. Um, so Ms. Updike's class wants to know, were you able to uh, make money or save money your first year in college? Anyone want to try to answer that one? Go ahead, Caleb. So a lot of the athletes get a lot of their meals for free. So I made sure to take as much as I could. I always take propels and I always take food home. And then athletes also get a bonus this year, depending on how much scholarship you get. So it's around like 35 to five grand um, that you can just take with you, which is nice. We get paid to play now. Oh yeah, that's right. New NCAA role. All right. That's great. Anyone else want to answer that one? Go ahead. Can add on to that. Um, so having a meal plan helps a lot because I'm not paying for food all the time. Um, and also it helps with the making friends side of thing if you're always in the cafeteria. Um, a lot of my friends had jobs. I personally didn't, but on almost every college campus, there's a lot of free stuff. You just have to know how to look for it. Um, so just do some digging and find out like, oh, there's free pizza on the quad today or, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's good to know that those things haven't changed since when I was in college. Um, Mr. Walgren's class has a question. Um, what was the biggest transition to living in a dorm? So I know some of you, li you're living in a dorm currently. Caleb, you lived in a dorm last year. Um, what was the biggest transition for you um, to dorm life? Oh, I I'll go first then. Um, okay. I think the biggest transition was learning to live with someone else which sounds kind of scary and at first it was a little bit like you you have to give and take you have to learn how to live with someone else i'm a little more neater than my roommate but as long as her stuff is on her side it's fine but once you figure out that bond you once you figure out how your relationship will work it it's fine like now like we figured out a system it's fine we divided the chores like i do dishes she takes out the trash and fills up our brita stuff like that um, but once you figure that out, then you'll be fine. But I think the hardest part is just learning to live with someone like that you really don't know that well, you know, unless you're living with a friend, but still it's hard. Great. Caleb. Yeah. I think the same thing goes, um, cause your roommates are either going to be your best friends or they, they can be bad. Um, but I think the biggest thing is setting down rules and expectations kind of at the beginning because you're all going to get along for the first month or so, because it's like almost the honeymoon period. You guys don't want to get on each other's nerves. But after a while, if you guys don't have rules of who's going to throw out the trash, who's going to do the dishes, things will really collapse on you quick. So it's about setting up those expectations at the beginning. That's great. So that, that really goes to just even living in a, an apartment off campus or whatever it may be, getting along with your roommates and establishing um, some of those Guardrail sounds like a really good plan. So what if you don't get along with your roommate? That was a question from Ms. Dowling's advisory. What What's the process? Like if you, if, you know, have you been in a situation where you didn't like your roommate? Did you, were you able to change it? Well, good news is it's not permanent. So you can always change it after a year or so. Worst case scenario. Um, I, I personally liked all my roommates and I lived with them. Same people this year. So. Oh, that's good. So. Riley, go ahead. Uh, I loved my freshman year roommate, so we didn't have any problems. Um, but a lot of people on my hall did. And it was pretty easy for them to just switch out. And, you know, you get to know all the people on your hall really well. So they had people who were in singles that had an extra bed. And so they'd ask if they could transfer there. And everyone's pretty understanding if you just don't get along with your roommate. That's great. So what advice do you have for juniors and seniors uh, that are just, you know, seniors getting ready to, they're, they're really fighting that senioritis. They've got three more months to go and they, you know, but what advice would you give them in their last three months? And then I'll ask a similar question for juniors. Um, Sami, do you want to go ahead and answer that one? Start. And then Grace, I'll go to you. Grace, you can start actually, because I'm going to think about this. <laughs> Um, I was just gonna say for seniors, like I said earlier, definitely just enjoy your last few months at home. Um, your parents are gonna miss you, even if you're really excited to leave them. Same with your siblings. So definitely just enjoy that. Like I feel like I like I said earlier, I definitely took that for granted. Like I miss my dog. So just like enjoy that. And then um in terms of advice 
for seniors especially who like haven't decided where they're going yet i would say like take advantage of um like the shortcrest alumni network and like reach out to older kids that you know like anyone would be happy to talk to you and like answer questions um I know that like when I was kind of deciding where I wanted to go, like talking to students firsthand about their experience at that school is like the best impression of how like life is going to be like there. So definitely talk to kids, talk to older students. Absolutely. That's great. And if you need contact information, you can come see me and I can connect you with uh, with someone. If you're if you don't know, um, speaking to the students, current students, if you're looking for someone that's going to the school that you're considering or just reach out. Riley, did you, or Sam, Samia, sorry, did you have anything to add to that? What Grace yes. shared? Okay. From an academic point of view, my best piece of advice is take your AP exams like seriously because those you can, for most AP exams, most colleges will accept your AP credit as long as it's maybe three, three for UF, but a lot of schools do fours and fives. But if you take them seriously, you can get rid of a lot of those gen ed credits that you need in college, which can, which can save you some time so you can focus on other classes and just that. enjoy your time more instead of having to take a, a gen ed class because I mean they're nice but you don't need them yeah um unless you have the credit um I mean okay I said that wrong but anyways um and then another thing I would say is just yeah I agree with Grace enjoy your time at home because when I first came back home I was like man I missed my bed so just just enjoy the time because now you're going to start to live on your own and you're you're in your emerging adulthood phase so just enjoy your time with your family and friends. That's great. Riley, I know you, you know, you had mentioned earlier that because of your AP scores, you were able to just not take any jet ends your, your, your freshman year. And that's, that's really, it's really, really awesome. Um, okay. So advice for juniors, you know, they're getting ready to, you know, get into that process. They're working with college counseling. Um, what advice would you have for them? If you can think back to your junior year of high school, um, getting those applications in working, um, you know, again with college counseling, uh, what advice do you have for them? Caleb, do you have any advice for juniors? Um, for me, not, not really. Uh, my application process is pretty easy. Just make sure you're picking a school you really like. Um, can you see yourself here? Do you like the academics? Do you like the people? And um, I know some people want to go out of state, but uh, it's really nice being two hours away from home. I can always see my parents if I need to. That's great. Grace, go ahead. I said this earlier, but definitely just deciding like location-wise. Again, if you're thinking in-state, out-of-state, city college town um size activities like things like that um that yeah that'd probably be my advice <laughs> that's great well we have uh one more minute and um i do have a lot of in the chat feature a lot of hellos from your uh teachers here at shorecrest um you know we thank you all so much for making uh time available to speak to our juniors and seniors we really appreciate it um and i will also say to our juniors and seniors if you have any other questions that were not answered today please let me know and i will email this wonderful group of alums um and we can get some answers for you um anything else you guys want to add before we the bell rings <laughs> I'm, I just want to say UF is great. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Go Gators. <laughs> nice plug there. <laughs> All right, gang. Well, thank you so much again for your time. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I know our students appreciate it. And uh, we will be in touch soon. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.